Welcome to the Capital Forum 7th Annual Antitrust Thought Leaders interview series, sponsored by KL Discovery. My name is Anne McGregor, and I head up the Brussels Bureau of the Capital Forum. And I'm joined here today by Rod Sims, Chair of the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, the ACCC. Welcome, Rod. It's Thank great you. to be able to interview you um, Australian to Australian, but in Washington, D.C. Excellent. That's and right. I, we do get around. We do. And I wanted to, first of all, congratulate you and everybody at the ACCC for winning the 2019 Government Agency of the Year Award at the Global Competition Review Awards, which were held a couple of nights ago here no. in Washington. Thank you. We were very pleased. I think that was really um, a great accolade to um, have bestowed upon you. And um, I think one of the reasons which the ACCC has really been in the spotlight this year, and you've had a lot of um, competition and antitrust lawyers and economists and policy makers uh, looking at the work you've been doing, is what you've been doing in the arena of digital platforms. Mm -hmm. So um, you were given a mandate by the then Australian Treasurer in December of 2017 to carry out an inquiry. Uh, a year later, so December of last year, 2018, you brought out your preliminary report, yes. which is a pretty substantial document running to over 350 pages. Mm. And it's not the final report. No. We still have the final report to look forward to, which yep. you're going to deliver by the end of June yep. 2019. Um, I think what struck me when I looked at the report is that you look at everything. It is comprehensive. Yes. You haven't shied away from staying in a very narrow competition box, hmm. so to speak. Um, and also what struck a chord with me was that really uh, uh, one of the, the, the main sort of driving principle behind it was to look at uh, what has happened with news and with investigative journalism and the fact that all the advertising, a large amount of advertising revenue over the last 15 or 20 years has moved away from traditional print and online and the impact that that has had on uh, journalism in Australia. There's a, quite an interesting statistic in the report of, uh, you know, there are 25% less print journalists in Australia now, in you know, in the period 2006 to 2016, 25 percent of print journalists disappeared. Yes. And so, good journalism, uh, as we know, at the Capital Forum. In fact, that's one of the reasons the Capital Forum was founded a number of years ago was to invest in good journalism, investigative journalism. Mm. And so, your report has come out. The preliminary report has come out with a number of quite interesting recommendations. There are only preliminary recommendations, yes. and the preliminary report also contains a number of ideas for further work in this period before you bring out the final report. Shall we just talk about um, some of the processes that led you to these um, preliminary findings? Um, and 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 I think if we if we go through them, uh, at the top of the list, of course, is three recommendations in the area of merger control. Um, you have talked about wanting to bring in um, a provision into the main Competition Act so that when you review mergers, you can look at whether a potential competitor is going to be yes. uh, removed. And so that's then getting at this um, uh, idea that we're seeing uh, discussed globally, that the, the big platforms, primarily Google and Facebook, can acquire smaller companies which maybe don't trigger thresholds which maybe wouldn't normally be looked at but still we should be reviewing those mergers. Yes that's right I mean the merger issue is an extremely important one uh, that the test for mergers in Australia is do they have the likely effect of substantially lessening competition and of course there's a lot of room for interpretation of that uh, but we think it would be helpful if the courts got guidance from Parliament that allowed potential competition to get more considered and also just to factor in uh, what the impact of the acquisition is on, on data and right. people's, ac right. people's uh, acquisition of data. So you're going to look, you're, you're recommending that uh, there should be provision to be able to look at the amount and the nature of the data that's going to be acquired by the... Yes, again, it's, mm. it's I mean, these things are things that you could frame now in terms of a substantial lessening of competition test. But I think it's helpful for the parliament to give guidance to the courts, as I say, on both the potential competition and the data point, just to make sure that 
they are immediately seen as legitimate things for the regulator to raise in court because, uh, I mean, in Australia we, we have to really take these matters to court if we're going to block a merger. So it's not a, we're not an administrative agency as, as many agencies are. We have to get the court to agree uh, to our views. And so having Parliament provide this extra guidance we think could be helpful. But again, we're testing ideas at the moment. We're, 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 we'll, our final ideas will come out in June. Right. Now, the merger regime in Australia is a, is a voluntary regime, um, relatively unusual in that respect compared to a lot of other major agencies yes. around the... Um, you're talking also, uh, one of your recommendations is that when digital platforms are going to do an acquisition, that you should get prior notice that that's going to happen and you should be given enough time to have a good look at it. Yes, look, that's something that we'd seek to get voluntarily. Uh, normally, the informal regime works fairly well. The fact that it's informal mean, means you don't have to worry about set thresholds mm. if we decide something is of concern, even if it's a, a relatively modest merger, we can still look into it. So informal means tremendous flexibility, mm. uh, but it does mean that people can go ahead and merge without us having the time to have a look at it. And in some cases that can be unfortunate because it's hard to untangle some mergers. Some it's easy, mm. some it's difficult. The third preliminary recommendation um, really took me uh, into the field of the work that the European Commission has been doing on Google. Yes. Um, you're saying that consumers need to be given a choice of browser and a choice of search engine. Mm. And this resonated for me, you know, looking in particular at the, mm. the Google Android case, the yes. decision last year in Europe on that. Yes. Well, I think the interesting thing about this is how much uh, some of the digital platforms pl pay to get this exclusive status. Um, and if people are paying a lot for it, it must matter a lot That's for them. right, yeah. And so some who say, well, it's not relevant and consumers don't want to bother anyway, if that's truly the case, why are they paying so much for the privilege? So that's right. I think that that's what elevates it as an issue and it'll be very interesting to see what submissions we get on that issue. Right. So I think the preliminary recommendations four and five, we can sort of group them together because what you're saying is there needs to be some sort of regulatory body or agency which has oversight over advertising and related businesses and news and digital platform regulatory yes. uh, matters. Well, this I think has been probably the most misunderstood recommendation because some people have interpreted it, either deliberately or not, as having a regulator um, uh, telling the platforms what should be in their algorithms, which of course is not what we're doing. This is really quite a simple set of recommendations. It's saying that a regulatory body, which could be existing bodies, uh, it could be the ACCC, it could be our media regulator in Australia called ACMA, um, it could be both, uh, looking at what the algorithms are doing. And you can do that just by throwing things at the algorithms and see what they do. You don't mm -hmm. actually have to uh, get behind the tech wall. But what, this, what we're also saying is have the ability to require the platforms to provide information. So this would be a, it's basically an enforcement issue. You're trying mm -hmm. to test where the laws are being breached. It's not in that sense, ex ante, here are the rules, you follow them. No, no, it's, it's, it's after the event enforcement. But what it's doing is, it's a sort of proactive enforcement. Mm. It's saying, mm. have the ability for the regulators to get behind the opacity, to, to bring more transparency to what's going on, have the automatic ability to demand information from them, but you're basically looking to see whether the existing laws are being breached. So in that sense, it's, it's really a bit of proactive enforcement right, rather right. than ex ante regulation. Right. Um, now, the sixth recommendation, preliminary recommendation, is that you've recommended quite a sweeping review of the, media, the existing Australian media yes. regulatory framework. And this is, I think, something which we see all over the world, that yes. we have uh, legislation in many jurisdictions dating back many decades which regulates the traditional media and yes. these new form, new platforms yes. aren't covered by that and it, therefore get away with more. Well, it, it's just a very un, uneven playing field and I think that is just becoming dramatic. Uh, the best example is of the appalling recent events in Christchurch mm -hmm. 
uh, which I think have got worldwide coverage, yes. uh, with 50 people lo losing their lives. And what happened is some of the traditional media, for a very short period of time, played redacted extracts of that, uh, of the filming of that event, mm -hmm. and they are now being investigated by the media uh, regulator. Yes. Yet the digital platforms that streamed the whole thing, th there's no comeback, of course, because they're not yeah. regulated. Yes. Uh, but that's just um, a very recent example, and I guess a, a quite a pointed example, but you see it all the time. I mean, w when political parties do their main advertising, it's close to the election. Yes. Traditional media are on a blackout. So the political parties spend all their money on the digital platforms doing their advertising, and they're spending a lot of money, mm. which the traditional media just can't get access to. Yeah. And then when you think of advertising, if you want to advertise on the traditional media, there's all sorts of rules that often put advertisers off. There's no rules on digital platforms. Mm. So this is competition with a very uneven platform, uh, playing field. And, and if there's one thing that gets competition people excited, it's having uh, competition that's not on its merits, that's competition that's, that's got an uneven playing field. So we're very keen to address that. Um, the seventh recommendation concerns copyright, and you're calling for um, the development of a, of a sort of uh, standard uh, on, on mm. takedown. Mm. When um, copyright has been breached, then there needs to be a way to get that yes. stuff down off platforms quickly. So this is just a way of making enforcement more responsive, uh, because if enforcement in the digital world doesn't happen fast, then it might not, it should just, no point happening at all. So having a takedown standard, uh, I mean, there's a lot of times where traditional media has put a lot of effort and money into content to have that then pirated away onto a digital mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. They then seek to complain, but who do you complain to? Um, it's very hard sometimes to get through to the digital platforms. Uh, and so this would mean, again, a sort of proactive, no, you've got this obligation to take it down and a faster process know who you're going to, standard set, take it down quickly, and I think that, that will make a big difference as well. Alongside that, um, you're calling for some quite sweeping changes to the Privacy Act in Australia. Yes. Um, recommendation number eight is about the use and collection of personal information of consumers yes. like you and me. Yes, and that's, I think, fundamental here. That's where the, the competition aspects of this and the consumer aspects come together and as a regulator that's both a competition regulator and equally a consumer regulator, yes. which most people don't understand, mm. they talk about us as a competition regulator in the American Bar Association circles, but we're as much a consumer regulator as we are competition. But the issue with privacy is, is fundamental to the whole, the whole digital platform issue because a lot of the market power of the platforms has come from the fact that consumers really didn't understand what was happening with their data, mm. and I would argue still don't. So that goes to consumer law, which is, are consumers properly informed, are they, are they misled? Uh, and the crucial issue there is privacy. Essentially, you're paying, to get on, to get using the digital platforms, you're paying with your data. So you, you can't exclude privacy issues from this, otherwise you're just not dealing with the issue properly. And so the Australian privacy laws are very principles based, which sounds good, but it means they're unenforceable. Right. It's very hard to enforce yes. a principle. Yes. And, and so of course the digital platforms like the principles um, and would argue they adhere to them, which in some ways they do, but in other ways they don't. But the privacy regulator of course can't enforce principles. So I think we have to have more clearly defined laws. So you're also calling for a code of practice for platforms within the framework of the Privacy Act, if I understand that correctly. Yes. So in, in, with privacy, we're doing two things. We're saying, and again, preliminary recommendations, but we're saying change the Privacy Act so it is more prescriptive. There's no doubt that's what we're talking about. And that's general. That applies to everybody because there's... The, what we found in the digital platform issues uh, are issues that, that have general applicability. But we're saying you, to, you, you need a code that the Privacy Commissioner can reach with the digital platforms to tailor aspects of, of privacy to digital platforms. You can't address everything through generic legislation. So uh, there's a bit of, um, a, a bit of 
um, sort of proactive, get ahead of the game type mm. enforcement there in terms of privacy. Right. And you're suggesting also a statutory cause of action for serious invasions of privacy. Yes. At the moment in our law, really not much can happen if you have an event such as what happened with Cambridge Analytica. I think Cambridge Analytica has been a wake-up call right across the world for what can happen uh, because we were told these things couldn't happen but they so easily did and once that un once Cambridge Analytica came to everybody's attention a whole range of other privacy issues came to the attention so having a, a statutory tort that would allow you know uh, uh, action to be taken when you have serious invasions of privacy we think that's essential I mean the internet uh, needs that form of regulation. If you're controlling a platform of significant size, you, you just have to have mechanisms in place to protect privacy. Uh, so we think it's a fundamental part of the recommendations. Uh, and the final uh, point, I guess, is unfair contract terms should be illegal. And this um, resonates in the sense that we've recently seen the German Competition Authority mm. come out with its, in its Facebook case and, and look yes. at unfair contract terms. Well, that. Yes, they've taken the case under competition law. Uh, unfair contract terms in Australia is a consumer law matter. Mm. Unfair contract terms in Australia happen when you've got standard form agreements. You, you, you just can't negotiate them. You, you, you only have to agree to them. Otherwise, yeah. you don't use the service. That's right. And we feel there are potential unfair contract terms issues with digital platforms. At the moment in Australia, we can take people to court to get various clauses de 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 declared void. Uh, unenforceable, but that's a cumbersome process. Mm. We, we believe unfair contract terms should be illegal and penalties should apply, and we think we've established enough case law in Australia so that companies know what an unfair contract term is. Right. So if we look a few months ahead, the final report is due by the end of June. In the meantime, it looks like we're going to have a federal election yes. in Australia. and. I think being in Washington this week, we're all aware that uh, you know there's a number of candidates coming out to run for US president next time around. Some of them are actually taking up some mm. antitrust issues yes. um, as part of their platform. Mm. Um, given that your preliminary report's been out since December, have any has there been you know any political take up uh, among Australian federal politicians on any of these points? Are they are they using them uh, you know in their campaigning or pre-campaigning, so to speak? Uh, I think in Australia there's a good recognition of our processes and that when you have a draft report, that really is out for comment and you need to wait for the final. But what has happened um, in the last week is that the Australian government has talked about um, uh, increasing privacy uh, powers, improving privacy legislation. So that part of our recommendations, I think, is already being picked up. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rest of it, I think politicians are wisely saying, well, let's go through the process. But the privacy things, I think, were so obvious yes. uh, that they're moving, and I'm delighted they are. Uh, and we're also getting pick up in the US on our recommendations, I think, and, and in Europe, that, that um, political parties are looking at them, and that's pleasing as well. I hope they wait for the final report, uh, but we are seeking with our report to influence um, legislation in Australia, but also across the world. Right. So I guess we're going to have to wait until the end of June to uh, read the final document. Yes. So we, this is the, the way we like to do things is you put out a draft and then uh, we've uh, got a lot of excellent submissions. Uh, we have uh, held three forums, uh, the last one with all the stakeholders. So mm -hmm. we had the digital platforms in the room, we had the advertisers in the room, we had the media in the room, we had privacy experts in the room, and a range of other stakeholders. It was just a fascinating day of conversation. So I think we're learning a lot. And uh, so, yeah, no, wait for the end of June for the final recommendations. And then we'll have to see whether the government takes some or all of the recommendations up and... Yeah, look, I think the time is right for the recommendations to get picked up. But, uh, I mean, we once, once we put out reports, we stay on the playing field. So we will continue to be advocates for change. Uh, that's how we go about things. So I'm hopeful that 
the recommendations will get picked up and we'll certainly be doing everything we can to make sure that happens. That's great. Rod Sims from the ACCC, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.